Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next edition of our sustainable webinar series through the Green New York program. Uh, my name is Brendan Woodruff. I'm the co-chair of the Operations and Engagement Subcommittee. I'd like to welcome you uh, again. Today, we're going to be talking about um, buying local food. Um, many of us like to do this because it tastes better. We like to support local farmers um, and all the economic benefits that we get from it. But there's also quite a few environmental benefits of it. Uh, when you think about the product that you're buying, um, a lot of produce this time of year and other things, uh, it's being flown in. And when you think about the carbon footprint of growing it halfway across the world and then putting it into a refrigerated plane or, um, or a shipping container, having it come here, putting it on a truck, then having it go to a distribution center, then to your grocery store, then you're going there, bringing it back. And that's a huge carbon footprint compared to buying what we can uh, grow here, and that also supports our local farmers. Um, as, a, as another couple quick announcements here, um, next month's webinar is going to be on greening your commute. Um, and again, these do take place the second Tuesday of the month at noon, so be on the lookout for that. And if there is anybody on the line who's interested in getting involved more in sustainability, uh, we're always recruiting new volunteers. So feel free to reach out. Um, we're always looking for new people. A couple of logistical things. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. It will be put on the Green New York website afterwards. So if you had colleagues that wanted to make it and uh, could not make it today, feel free to send the link to them. Um, if you do have questions as we go along, feel free to put them in the chat box. We'll get to them at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, I'm going to hand things over to Emily Cook, who's going to talk to us about some programs that Ag and Markets have. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emily Cook, and I am at Ag and Markets in the uh, Ag Business Development Division. And I am going to talk about a lot of different ways that we can purchase local food, um, including some of the programs that the department has. Bear with me while I get my bearings on this PowerPoint. <laughs> All right, my least favorite thing about doing these webinars is I can't kind of do my quizzes. Um, but when I first moved to New York two years ago to take this job, I said, ooh, go into the Big Apple. Um, and being in agriculture, I started to think about that a little more. And I said, why is New York City a very concrete place called the Big Apple? Um, so I did a little research, and I don't know if any of you guys know why New York's called the Big Apple, but it really refers all the way back to uh, times when people would come in and sell apples all over the city. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool, and we've you know, now with the resurgence of farmers markets, we've kind of gotten back to that. Um, and I think a lot of people don't realize what a big ag state New York is. Uh, we are in the top one to three states in terms of our production and many dairy products. Milk, we're number two in the nation. And we're in the top 10 for many fruit and vegetable crops, including apples, grapes, green beans, cabbage peas, and a whole bunch of other things. So I like to kind of frame local buying by um, putting, kind of putting that in context, that there is a lot of local food out there. We're lucky in that way in New York. So a little bit on the why and where of local buying, Brendan kind of went over <clears throat> a lot of the main reasons, and I think we've been talking about this issue for a while. So we're fairly familiar um, with the role that local buying plays in terms of supporting the economy of the state. And again, because, at, because New York is a big ag state, um, we really need to fuel that and support it by making decisions to support the agricultural sector. Um, dairy is a great example of this. Um, it accounts for almost $6 billion in, in the economy, the New York economy. And it's really struggling right now. And as dairy struggles, a lot of the support services for all farms struggle um, to survive. So it's, it's, it's really supporting the economy. And I think people should factor that into their purchasing decision, decisions. Um, other, other ways we can support economy is through supporting food businesses. 
um, and supporting a lot of the agritourism activities that have really um, come to fruition in the past five to 10 years. Um, environmental benefits, we talk about food miles and Brendan hit on that. Um, there, are, there are a lot of food miles um, issues and a lot of studies that show just how many miles food travels to get to our plates here on the East Coast, especially in the winter. Um, one great thing I like to bring up, especially in the light of um, kind of the struggles dairy is having, a lot of these alternative milks that people are drinking, uh, almond milk, cashew milk, um, they're, they're traveling from California. That's where our almond industry is based. And so that's, you know, traveling 3,000 miles almost to get, to get almonds over here. And going a little deeper on the environmental um, aspects of, of that, the almond industry is a huge, huge consumer of water in a state that doesn't have a lot of it. Um, so, so, so that's another environmental factor to, to think about when you're making decisions about what food you're eating. Um, I think we've all kind of become familiar with farmers markets, community supported agriculture. Um, they've become much more popular in the past couple of years. Um, there's now a whole brash of online ordering options for local food. Um, grocery stores are making more of an effort to highlight local food. And our surging agritourism industry is all kind of, all kind of opportunities for us to engage in buying local food more and more. So I'm going to talk a little bit about farmers markets in the context, context of ag and markets. Uh, we license New York State farmers markets. And an easy way to find that is if you come to the, the ag and markets webpage, agriculture.ny.gov. And if you click on, you go to that site. Uh, if you come to our site, we've got a great find a local market. Find a local market um, search feature. So it's over on the left. Um, share the screen here. Oh, sorry. Uh, Makes it a lot harder. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, better to show people. All right, here we go. All right. So. Yeah. Thank God I have some technical assistance. Uh, so you just come to the main Ag and Markets website and hit find a farmer's market. You can put in um, your county. So let's say we're in, uh, let's see, we're in the Bronx. And it pulls up a whole list of farmer's markets, times, uh, addresses. Um, so if you're not familiar with, that, with uh, farmers markets or you think they're, you haven't found one close to your home, this is a really good resource. All right, um, something that Ag and Markets has just started participating in, and I, I think a lot of agencies do this, and a lot of workplaces have started um, having workplace food delivery options of local food. So two, just two examples of this that we do at Ag and Markets. Uh, one is Nine Miles East Farm pulls up at 9.40 a.m. on Monday morning, uh, opens up their coolers, and People come down and get to purchase all kinds of salads, um, meals, soups, um, and they even have a kind of semi-sign up, semi-community supported agriculture program where you can um, pay for, prepay for a, a bag of veggies during the season. Field Goods is another business that um, provides food delivery um, I think they do it all year round, and they even include kind of frozen vegetables 
during the, the off season. So they're, they're pretty interesting. Um, I want to I want to kind of focus a little bit um, during this presentation on two of the promotional programs that we run at Ag and Market, and I want to do this because we're taking it we're taking it to a bigger scale. Um, you know, farmers markets and CSAs they do a great job of supporting local growers. They do a great job of reaching out into communities to bring local food to people. Um, but, but some people are too busy. Some people, you know, farmers markets tend to be a little more expensive just because you're dealing with smaller farmers who aren't growing to the economy of scale that larger growers are growing to. So if we really talk about moving the needle, we want to see local product in grocery stores. We want to see it, you know, where people can access it all the time, any, anywhere they are, basically. So the two programs that we use to support this at Ag and Markets are the Taste New York program, which many of you may have seen the Taste New York signs along the highway and some of the Taste New York activations in rest stops. That was kind of the beginning of Taste New York. Um, but we've really, the program has really developed over the past uh, three or four years. And kind of some of the, some of the uh, rest stop activations of Taste New York are not so impressive, we realize. They're kind of our least favorite part of the program. Um, to give you an idea of some of the stuff Taste New York does um, and the history of Taste New York, it was launched in 2013 and it's the state's buy local campaign. Um, and it kind of came about um, with the rise of a lot of legislation that supported the farm-based beverage sector uh, as craft breweries and distilleries were really getting going and people were interested in developing that. Uh, Taste New York kind of focused on, on supporting that. Now it supports all sorts of food businesses in the state. And we went to we went from kind of these activations at uh, on the highway that kind of weren't great to really developing stores. Um, here's one at uh, on the Taconic called uh, Todd Hill. This is the Taste New York store there. Um, and these stores are really they're really curating some really great local products. Everything from cheese to potato chips from New York, yogurt, beverages, all kinds of really great stuff, and they're encouraged to rotate these products. So it's a little bit of an incubator for food businesses. They get to rotate into Taste New York stores, um, get some exposure, and then continuously new, new, new products are brought in. So we've got a whole bunch of retail locations, and now at all of the new welcome centers in each region, um, we have Taste New York stores incorporated into those. You'll also see Taste New York at transportation hubs like Grand Central Station and Penn Station. You'll see Taste New York concession, um, concessions at sports arenas and state parks. And I'm just going to whiz through some pictures of these to give you an idea of, of these stores and kind of how, how great they are. Um, you can see they've got corn during the season. They've got cheeses, all kinds of uh, prepared goods, baked goods from local bakeries. So they're really worth searching out and, and stopping when you're, you're in that region. Here's the Island Welcome Center, uh, Southern Tier Welcome Center. Uh, here's uh, Taste New York Cafe at, at Jones Beach. Uh, Taste New York Bar there as well. This is the Taste New York Concessions at Rochester Arena. 
And just based on the location, there's, you know, they range in just doing drinks to having having food and kind of larger menus. Now, do you know if they're at the Times Union Center? I, I, they are at the Times Union Center. Yeah, okay. I think that um, kind of got a, a facelift last year um, and is now has like a much better offering mm -hmm. and look to it. Um, here's the one at Grand Central Station. Chase also sponsors events, marathons. Um, they give uh, they give businesses opportunities to go to trade shows at the Fancy Food Festival, um, things like that. Um, they host events. And I wanted to kind of bring up agri agritourism events as a way to access local food and support the growing agritourism, the growing agritourism um, industry in New York. You can find a whole listing of events on the Chase New York website and ways to links to access product order. A lot of places you can order product online now, which is really nice. So I'm going to move into our newest program, which is the New York State Grown and Certified Program. And this program um, is very new. It was launched in the fall of 2016. So many people may many people may not have um, really heard of it yet. We did work with ESD to launch our first commercial this year, which I'm just going to show you now. When you're born and raised in New York State, and you work the same fields your great-grandpa did, you start to see things differently. So you take every step you can to preserve this place for the next generation. Turns out when you treat the land with love, the land returns to favor. New York State Grown and Certified. Grown here, grown right. So that commercial launched last summer and played played for a couple months. Um, in the Albany and Capital Region um, media media by area, um, and also in the Hudson Valley. So I'm hoping maybe some people have seen that commercial. Um, so Grown and Certified um, is our effort to really connect consumers to New York State products. Some people may have been familiar with our Pride of New York program. And while that was a great program, people really loved it, um, the, the qualifications for participating in it were that the products had to be grown, processed, um, or even just packed in New York. So we felt like it wasn't really, it wasn't really supporting farmers in New York as much as we wanted it to, because something could come in from another state, be processed here in New York, and still um, be able to use the Pride of New York seal on the package. So this is our effort to really, um, really show consumers that it's, it's definitely New York product um, and to really support our growers. The program is different in another way, um, and that is that we take into we take into consideration farms' environmental commitment um, and their environmental stewardship. So, to join the program, um, produce farms have to have a third-party food safety audit, and they also need to participate in the Agricultural Environmental Management Program, which they participate in through their local soil and water. And this is another thing to think about, um, another benefit of buying local. We know 
what our New York farms are doing in terms of their environmental stewardship and their environmental management. And looking for the grown and certified seal is just another way that we're marketing that our farms are good stewards of the land. Um, this environmental management program um, is basically a risk analysis, starts out as a risk analysis um, of farm operations and helps them identify environmental risks and helps them to connect with resources for correcting any of those risks or making environmental improvements um, that, are, that, that are identified in this assessment. <clears throat> um, farms get to use this grown and certified logo on their seal for free. Um, and we also work with participating retailers to use this seal um, to promote New York products within, within the store and really highlight them. These are just some of the stores that participate. Um, they do okay. We're trying to give them a little financial support to identify products a little better um, in their stores. So kind of keep your eyes peeled um, this summer for the seal in these stores. Um, here are just some pictures of what some stores have done. And I'd love to, I'd really love to hear from anyone if they have seen this in stores um, or seen the seal products. We're working with our producers to help them put the seal, change their packaging so that the seal appears on their products more. Here's just some more. Um, our Grown and Certified website is a really great resource to find local food as well. Just going to jump to that page. So if you just click on where to buy, pulls up a searchable map for you. So we'll do Albany and select a distance. And you can look for retail locations. You can look for producers or restaurants that support the program. Um, and we're hoping to kind of cross-reference this with our Taste New York database, um, our Taste New York Website also has a way to search for products on it. So hopefully in the next year, we'll see those kind of come together. You can search for specific products, look for vegetables, um, and you can search by the name of a producer um, if you want to. So it pulls up a nice little list of, um, of farms or participants in the program and gives you an idea of what they grow and a link to their website. Grown and certified, um, it's, it's really, I mean, it's, it's been developing over the past three years really quickly. We're certifying all kinds of products from vegetables to we just released seafood standards. So we have grown and certified oysters um, we've got, you know, meats in the program. We've got, we're just doing process products. We're um, working with a, a cooperative out in Western New York and a beverage distributor to develop one of the first 100% uh, New York juice, grape juice cups that's going to be available for schools to buy and institutions to buy. So we're doing a lot of work. and. Um, just having people become more aware that this seal is out there and really start to look for it, start to ask and demand it of retailers, um, that's going to really build this program and, and increase the supply and marketing of local produce. Here's some of the, the marketing we've done so far. We've done some banner ads. We've done some print ads. If anyone reads Edible Magazine, we advertise them there a lot. Um, but I do want to stress that consumer de demand is the bottom line 
um, in terms of increasing the availability of local produce. Um, if, if you're not out there asking for it, stores aren't, aren't really going to make the effort to get it or to stock it or to identify it in their store. I mean, we are a big ag state. But I think we, we actually don't know where a lot of our New York product is when we walk into the store. For example, I go into pretty much any store. I see Intergrow Tomatoes. They're um, produced in New York. They're one of the biggest greenhouse companies we have in New York. Um, and I, I don't see a lot of marketing by the store around that. So I think it's really important. And one of the best things everyone can do is just really get out there and demand it. If people are asking store managers for New York products, they're going to think a lot harder about putting it out there on their shelves. All right, so that's kind of it for me. I guess we're going to look at questions. Yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, so we're going to get to questions here in a minute. Um, just want to go through and reiterate a couple of things that she said. Those Taste New York stores are fantastic. Um, whenever I'm traveling on the thruway, um, or I'm, you know, occasionally I've seen them in airports in different places, you know, I always stop and get something because you know you're going to get a fantastic product. Um, and the welcome centers are, are great for that, especially the new capital region one. So if you're coming up from the south on 87, uh, they've got a fantastic Taste New York store at that one. And they have fast EV chargers. So uh, if you want to plug in and buy some local products, you're good to go. Um, and I believe the Todd Hill store has electric vehicle chargers as well. Um, all right, so we're going to get to the comments here. We have somebody who says they've seen the seal and price chopper. Oh, great. Um, <clears throat> and I will reiterate that as well. I have seen, um, seen that in price chopper. I've seen it in a couple other um, retail locations. I've even seen it in Vermont, so um, at, a, at a grocery store there. So, <clears throat> um, you know, we're expanding. So. Um, somebody else has said they've seen it in the, the tops in Caramel, New York, or Carmel, New York. Um, so it's making the rounds. Fantastic. Um, so a question here. Is there any soy milk that's made in New York? That is a good question, and I don't know the answer to it. Um, you could, we could check on the Taste New York website and see if we can see if you can find that product. Um, I'm just not aware of soy milk made in New York. Do there is a lot of soy grown in New York, um, so it's definitely not out of the question. Mm -hmm. So is there a cost benefit to the stores that carry New York products, and is that benefit passed on to the consumer? Well, I mean, hopefully this is all based on the consumers are going to be demanding this, and if a store is going to be carrying New York product and marketing it, and consumers want it, that they're going to see their sales increase. Um, whenever a store can purchase in larger quantities, um, that can be passed on to the consumer. Um, the cost of local foods can be expensive. The co I think when people say the cost of local foods can be expensive, a lot of that has to do with what kind of what farm it's coming from and sort of where in the supply chain they're accessing that food. A lot of that food is not just because it's local, but because it's probably from a smaller farm, which has a lot more expenses because they are operating at a scale where they don't have the efficiencies of mechanical labor, um, and they, ha they just haven't mechanized a lot of their systems because it, it doesn't pay off for them to do that. It's, it's too expensive. Farming is a hugely expensive um, endeavor. Um, so I think that is where the expense comes in. But I think there's, you know, there's a lot of there, there's more New York produce out there in stores than I think we realize. Um, and I think the cost of, of that produce is generally in line with produce coming from somewhere else. Um, and I highly encourage people to kind of pick up labels um, at stores and see, you know, try and see if you can determine where it's coming from. Um, one thing you can look for on milk is there's a, a line of numbers on every, on every milk carton or every milk jug. Um, and if it starts with a 36, that means that it was 
processed in a plant in New York. Um, so that's just another way you can, you can kind of tell if milk's been processed or any dairy products come from New York. Now, um, one other question here. You mentioned restaurants with the Grown and Certified program. Can you tell us a little bit more about how restaurants participate and what consumers can look for uh, when eating out? Sure, restaurants, and this is this is part of Grown and Certified. We haven't developed as much. We've been focusing on getting farms and retailers and distributors on board. But restaurants, we work in just a partnership with. So they would basically be able to use the seal and say, we support local, but you'd have to, as a consumer, do your due diligence as to exactly, you know, what they are sourcing local. When Oysters joined the program, we ran a special in Long Island with some restaurants where people got a plate of oysters and um, each, each one from New York was identified with a special kind of grown and certified um, uh, I, I think it was a little flag they put on the on the plate. Uh, the next question here, can the seal be used for products made with New York produce such as apple cider vinegar? Perhaps this would give New York companies an incentive to buy local. Yes, uh, we just developed standards for processed products. So any product that has, any product in which over 50% of the ingredients by volume. So you couldn't have water with, you know, um, infused New York raspberry syrup. That wouldn't be grown and certified. But anything that was the majority of all the ingredients in there are grown in New York, um, that can be a grown and certified product. The environmental um, component of it still applies to process products, we actually go and have the processor document that their farms are participating in the Ag Environmental Management Program. Uh, so the next question, are there any incentives for New York grown and certified products to be package free or use less packaging? Um, no, I don't think we've really addressed that issue yet. We're just trying to get people to put the put the seal on, you know, whatever packaging they are using. Um, but we haven't specifically addressed trying to reduce packaging. Mm -hmm. um, what are the best options for consumers during the winter months to buy local products? Ah, good question. Well, we have a bunch of winter farmers markets, and again, you can look at some of those from the uh, farmers market website. Um, I, I know that there are a couple companies and packers that are now doing frozen vegetables, so I think that's pretty interesting. I think Field Goods um, continues their winter deliveries, and they put in some frozen things as well as whatever storage crops are out there. And I can't say enough good things about the Troy Winters Farmer, Farmers Market. Um, so if you are looking for something in the winter in the Capital District, the one in Troy is fantastic. Yeah, and Schene the Schenectady Market is pretty good too. Mm -hmm. um, are there any, this is a little bit um, off topic, but we can get into this. Are there any programs available to help New Yorkers who are interested in getting into farming? Um, yes, kind of not directly with the Department of Ag and Markets, but through a lot of our grants. There are a lot of, we support a lot of work that Cornell Cooperative Extension does with beginning farmers. Um, Empire State Development runs a beginning farmers grant program. And our region and the Hudson Valley is filled with all sorts of organizations that help people get into farming um, in terms, you know, from organizations like Capital Roots, which, you know, has community gardens where people can just start growing things, um, to, um, you know, the Young Farmers Coalition, which helps young farmers, young farmers get experience and advocates for them, um, to American Farmland Trust which helps set up learning farms and teaching farms. So there, there is a lot out there. And if, 
anyone out there is interested, I highly recommend connecting with your cooperative extension in, in your county. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good advice. Um, does Field Goods participate in the New York Grown and Certified Program? They, um, we had an initial conversation with them and they're on my list of kind of people to get back to. Um, right now, no. One of the problems we run into um, with working with smaller farms is that we do have this food safety certification requirement. And if farms are selling to markets that don't require them to have a food safety certification, they don't have a huge incentive to do it. We are, we are now supporting farms financially who will who go through this food safety certification we're paying for all their expenses up to a thousand dollars which covers pretty much any size farm um, and we're we're giving people grants to make food safety improvements on their farm right now so you know it's building this program is going to take a while and it's going to take support on def several different fronts but we're reaching out to more and more people and hoping we can get them into the program. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit with the food safety standards? Um, kind of just a brief what those are and what the farms are looking at? Sure. For produce, we ask that the farm has a, a third party food safety audit, which many people use the USDA Good Agricultural Practices Program, USDA GAP. So that involves the farm coming up with a food safety plan, and then once a year they're audited by Ag and Markets um, to see if they're actually doing what they said they would do on this food safety plan. And that involves um, field practices as well as good handling practices in their packing shed, um, trying to eliminate any kind of sources of contamination of food, um, looking at their the water quality of their washing water, um, all sorts of things like that. And um, this year, there's a new there's new there's new federal legislation called the Food Safety Modernization Act, and that is actually requiring that um, pretty much all farms adhere to some of these requirements. But that's the, that's not an audit, so. Um, there is no way, farms won't get audited every year, some are exempt. Um, so we're still going to keep our, our requirement of having the third party audit. And we have another question here about beginning farmers programs, which uh, I feel you, there are definitely days where uh, state service makes us all yearn for the field. <laughs> um, where can they find more information on the beginning farmers program? The Beginning Farmers Program is put out through Empire State Development. So I would visit their website to get details on that and we'll have to wait, I think until the budget comes out to see if there is another round of that for, for this coming year. Are there any subcategories of, based on regions within these programs such as New York State Hudson Valley or New York State Mohawk Valley? In terms of grown and certified, mm -hmm. um, not really. Um, we wanted to create just one one program, one seal to rule them all. The program is is meant to be used in conjunction with any kind of local local buying program. So on Long Island, on Long Island, there's you know grown on Long Island. Um, I I. I think in this area there's a cat skills grown. So we we want people to use this, you know, however it benefits them. Um, I'm not sure a lot of the a lot of local programs have an on seal um, label like our grown and certified logo. So we wanted to make something like that um, available to people. And we also wanted to have something for produce going out of the state and just keep it to New York State because most people know that we have an advantage as New York State that most people really like that. And when you take it up to the export level, like for apples, um, you know, internationally, people really know New York State. So that's another benefit to growers for using this. 
And I, I will reiterate on that one. Uh, New York State apples do taste better than Washington apples every time. Um, so if you are in the store, do look for the New York grown and certified logo on apples. You'll get a better product. Um, so a question here. Um, so obviously we think a lot about climate change. Um, we think about the increased frequency of storms and natural disasters. Uh, how have farms just briefly here been affected by that? Farms, I would say every farm gets affected by severe weather events. They can be super devastating for farms. Um, and they can just also, even if they're not a traumatic event, having more rain, having more moisture increases pest and disease issues for just about every farm. Um, we're also seeing um, invasive insects invasive insects um, persisting through winters more frequently. Um, so that's another kind of challenge farms face that can be linked to climate change. And I'm sure I'm forgetting a whole host of other, <laughs> other and, problems. And off of that, I will put a plug in for our July webinar. It is going to be on what individuals can do to stop the spread of invasive species. Um, you know, and we think about this in terms of like the emerald ash borer um, or some other um, in insects that are attacking trees and things like that, but it really affects farms too. Um, you know, it's not just, um, you know, the hydrilla in water or other spiny water flea um, that's got recreational potential. It can really be devastating to farmers as well. So tune in in July. Right. <clears throat> so if you have any other questions, type them into the chat box now. Um, any final thoughts, Emily? Um, just get out there and, and ask for New York product. I mean, really, consumer demand is is what drives the supply of having New York products on shelves. So I can't stress that enough. And I think this is it's good to have this webinar after last month on single-use plastic reductions because one of the two kind of common themes here is is planning. So when you think about um, you know reducing single-use plastics, you bring your water bottle, you bring something else, you plan ahead, and you can get rid of a lot of the impacts. With these types of products, if you plan ahead, like if you're doing your meal planning or if you're thinking you're going into the grocery store, you plan ahead of time, all right, we're going to eat this today. And then you search the store, what can we find? Um, you can make a real big difference. So I, I definitely see that as, as kind of a common theme of a lot of the actions we've been thinking about. Yeah, and I think another in kind of environmental benefit of buying local, which, you know, um, you know, isn't super direct, but local produce tends to last a whole lot longer. So I think we end up, you end up developing, uh, you end up having less waste, and you end up modifying your, your buying habits a little bit. Um, local produce can cost a little bit more, um, but people often end up buying less because they don't want to waste it because it costs a little more. Um, and it lasts longer. Mm -hmm. And we try not to be too Albany-centric on these webinars since we are covering statewide. Um, but with the spring season coming up, um, there are farmers markets at lunchtime here uh, at the Empire State Plaza and also in uh, the SUNY Plaza on Broadway in downtown Albany. So be on the lookout for those as uh, summer rolls around. So um, with that, I don't see any further questions. I want to thank everybody for jumping on the webinar today. Uh, a reminder that our next one coming up in April is on uh, how to green your commute um, in advance of Green Your Commute Day in May. So thanks, everybody, for jumping on today. And uh, get out there and demand some local product. Yeah. Yeah.